Customization in Halo has always been an important aspect of setting up player identity, as well as establishing some sense of immersion. As a matter of fact, Halo Reach used the player-created Spartan as a part of the campaign, and although there might be an official armor set for Noble Six within the Halo lore, that didn't stop Bungie from creating a unique experience never before seen in a Halo game. Halo 4 and Halo 5 took it a step further and made multiplayer itself a part of the Halo lore, therefore making the player themselves a part of the Halo canon. With the introduction of Commander Lorette and the Academy, it looks like Infinite's multiplayer may follow suit. I'm Sinister Cobra, and in this video, thanks to 343's lore-focused blog Cannon Fodder, we will take a glimpse at the lore behind some of the helmets included in Halo Infinite, as well as past iterations of the helmet. Introduced in Halo 4, the Aviator Helmet also appears in Halo 3 and Halo 5. The Helmet version in Halo 3 comes from the free-to-play game Halo Online. It came into Halo 3 through the Master Chief Collection Season 5 Season Pass DLC. Halo 4 and Halo 5 came included with multiple variants, however in the interest of time, I'll only cover the base helmets in this video. The in-game description reads as follows employed by interceptor squadrons assigned to Anvil Station. The in-game description reads as follows, recommended for broadsword pilots. The in-game description reads as follows, usable only by augmented personnel, the Aviator Helmet's ultra-wideband machine interlink gives Spartan 4 pilots unparalleled control over their aircraft. The description reads as follows. The Aviator Helmet is tailored for use by cybernetically augmented aerospace pilots. Among its special features is a high bandwidth machine interlink configured to operate seamlessly with next-gen neural interlaces. Zvezda is a brand new Mayoner class being introduced in Halo Infinite. However, because of the similarities with the EVA sets of helmets, we will be taking a look at the many iterations of EVA. Introduced in Halo 3, EVA appears in Halo Reach, Halo 4, and Halo 5. It is the base for the iconic helmet worn by Noble Team member Emil. EVA is all but confirmed to be returning to Halo Infinite, as we do see the Emil variant in promotional material for the multiplayer. The in-game description reads as follows. The Mayoner 5 variant was developed and tested at the UNSC facilities in Lister, Eggbirth, Ganymede, integrated feedback gathered from the Summa Deep Space Incident. The in-game description is exactly the same as the description in Reach. The in-game description reads as follows, designed for extra vehicular activity. The in-game description reads as follows. The EVA helmet can be paired with all mil-spec hard shell and mechanical counterpressure suits. The description reads as follows. The Svesta faceplate incorporates a programmable phased array antenna grid though leveraging its full capabilities has proven to be a challenge for software developers. As with the Aviator Helmet, the Soldier Helmet was also introduced in Halo 4 and appeared in Halo 3 and Halo 5. The Soldier Helmet introduced into Halo 3's array of customization also comes from Halo Online. It arrived via the same Season 5 Season Pass DLC. 
in-game description reads as follows. Anvil Station testing has proven this is one of the Mjolnir platform's most versatile variants. The in-game description reads as follows. Rigorously tested on the rocky world of Chai Seti 4. The in-game description reads as follows. Low power consumption, comfort, and obsessive attention paid in ergonomics distinguish the soldier helmet design from other Mjolnir patterns. The description reads as follows. The latest iteration of the Soldier Helmet features a new revision of Material Group's Combat Catalyst firmware. The fire team synchronization features remain unfinished, but Dr. Halsey's interest may accelerate development. As of the recording of this video, there has yet to be any official lore about the Halo Infinite version of the CQB helmet. However, as it is readily available in the older games, I thought taking a look at the evolution of the CQB helmet would be a nice bonus. The end game description reads as follows. Developed at the Weeklichi Rustungssysteme and tested at the UNSC's Special Warfare Center. The in-game description reads as follows. The Mjolnir slash C variant was developed and tested at the UNSC facilities in Essen Dushland and Songnam Hanguk, respectively integrating feedback gathered from the Jericho 7 theater. The in-game description reads as follows. The Wiklache Rustung system houses the results of its decades-long work with reaction enhancers and predictive movement algorithms in the protective armored shell of battle-tested CQB helmets. The Mark 7 helmet was the very first piece of new armor from Halo Infinite that was shown to us. It has quickly become one of my personal favorite designs, and now we are getting our first in-game look at the Mark 7 helmet via Season 7 of the Master Chief Collection. The in-game description reads as follows, Materials Group Evolutionary Design Study that eventually formed the basis of the production of MK7. And that is a small glimpse at the lore of some of the helmets revealed to be in Halo Infinite. With 343's plan to make Infinite last 10 years, there's no doubt there will be more pieces of armor to compare later down the road. I hope you enjoyed this video as it is my first time making lore focused content. Liking this video will let me know that I should make more videos like this one, but also feel free to leave a comment with criticism. Subscribing will also be greatly appreciated. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video and I will talk to you in the next one.